Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the first ever video of the Django Foundation series at SpecWit. This video is a part of the full stack maker series of the Bridge Student Accelerator program. In this series, we are going to learn uh, how to build a web application from scratch with Django. We are going to consider that you have no uh, prior exposure to Django or web development in general. So we are going to spend some time exploring both Django and web development in general and bring you to a place where you can go from no code to actually building web applications in no time. So let's quickly dive into it. So before we get started with actually writing some code, I want to answer some simple what and why should we use Django. One of the first reasons why you need to use Django is that this framework boasts about being a web framework for perfectionists with deadline. Now what they try to say is basically that you can build extremely good website uh, very, very quickly. There are a lot of things already pre-built into the Django framework itself. So which is why it's also called batteries included. Then it's secure with inbuilt uh, web security best practices. So you won't have to worry about making your web application very secure on the internet. So, so some of the web security best practices are already implemented in Django readily while you install it. And most important is very easy to learn and use as a beginner, which should be all the more reason why we should, we should get started with Django as a first web framework we learn. Also, like just as a footnote, you have to know that what are some other popular Python alternatives to Django. So I'm just going to give you the names and leave the, leave you to explore them yourself. So the three most popular ones are Flask, Tornado and Pyramid, and all three of them are other Python frameworks. And I'm not discussing uh, the frameworks in other languages at this point of time, but you can feel free to Google and dig deeper into those topics. And let's also look at what are companies that use Django so that we have no doubts as to why we should actually pick Django as our framework of choice and actually kind of reassure us that Django is not actually a bad choice because especially because there are a ton of other options out there in the market. So the first thing, first company that is the most popular and everybody recognizes is Instagram. Instagram's backend is built in Django in uh, Symfony with some other tools uh, that lets it scale exceedingly well to close to a billion plus users. So that should actually kind of prove that Django is extremely scalable. Then you have Discus, which is a common platform for uh, a content management system. So you can simply plug Discus comments into your blog or any platform that you have. Bitbucket uses Django, Dropbox, Spotify, Mozilla, Eventbrite, and of course, Specbit's entire platform itself is built with Django in the backend. So now let's quickly get into understanding the prerequisites for this series. So the first prerequisite is that you know Python programming and uh, you need to know good amount of functions, modules, and also some amount of object-oriented programming using Python to be able to do this thing comfortably. Uh, if you don't already know Python, I recommend going back and doing some work on Python before you come into Django. Then of course, you, we need HTML and CSS and uh, also have a good understanding on how the internet works or the HTTP works. So let's dive into the Django architecture. So the first I'm gonna go over the Django architecture uh, in terms of the general competitive way of what other frameworks are in the market, something called the MVC structure, which is model view controller. Django is a slightly changed the thing and they call it the model view and the template uh, structure instead of model view controller. So let me just quickly explain what this is. So we call one of the most important parts of Django architecture as a model and model essentially defines what and how data is stored or accessed in the database. So uh, the three important point parts of any web framework is what the user sees, uh, who decides what the uh, user sees and where the data is stored, uh, whatever the user is entering or etc. So those three things are defined using model, template and views. And model is everything to do with data. Template is whatever the user sees on the screen. And view is what controls what goes into the template essentially. Right. So this should be, this should give you a high level overview as to what model template view is. Then let's go into the, the architecture as per the project structure of Django when we start a project in Django, right? So Django essentially is initialized with the entire project, which is the entire web application. And I'm trying to essentially give you also the description of the Django terminology. So when we start a Django project, we're essentially starting a web application that we are going to deploy at some point. 
right? And Django has this weird way of organizing things. So if you have a, a module of functionalities, you call them apps inside the project. So uh, if you, you can club together a bunch of functionalities and you call them apps and you can have as many apps as you like inside a given project. So an example of an app would be something like uh, user authentication, a blog, or anything that has a concentrated amount of features that you want to develop and maintain together uh, rather than just in a monolithic fashion, right? So that is what we have the first inside the project. We have a couple of apps. Then um, we have project configuration folder, which contains a bunch of files that defines how the project will behave, how it gets deployed and stuff like that. And finally, we also have the database where all the data is stored and which is what uh, is accessed through our models that we were talking about. So now like, let's quickly look at the, some of the files. So the project configuration essentially is consisting of three files, uh, settings, URLs, and wsgi.py. Settings, as the name suggests, holds all the settings for the entire project. URLs.py holds all the endpoints, which is whatever you have after your root domain. So let's say if my website is specbit.com, uh, whatever comes after specbit.com, that is slash home slash about, you might have any bunch of URLs. Uh, all of those URL endpoints are included in URLs.py. WSGIPy is a configuration for something called as a web server gateway interface. Uh, we just need to know that it exists. Uh, we will get, go deeper into this as the series progresses. Uh, so the next thing that we are going to look at is a bunch of files in each application. So every app is similar in a certain way as to how it's architected. So every app will contain models.py, views.py, and admin.py. Uh, models.py contains all the models that define how data will be stored with regards to that app. Views.py is connected to our URLs and kind of controls what the user is going to end up seeing when the user visits a certain URL, right? It's, it also controls as to what something gets plugged into the templates. And of course we have the template slash templates, which is a folder which contains all our HTML files and static is another folder which contains all our uh, CSS, JS and images that is included in our website. And admin.py is a place for, um, you can call it an interface where we define how our models will look like in the admin panel that Django gives us in it. Right. So I hope this kind of gives you the entire project st structure in a bird's eye view fashion so that when we do initialize the project, uh, we have some uh, kind of introduction to what we're seeing there already. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. I will jump in the comments and answer them for you.